what was the difference between Mosasaurus and Kronosaurus? Have you ever wondered which giant sea monster was the bigger, brawnier beast, Mosasaurus or Kronosaurus? Imagine meeting two colossal reptiles in the deep blue. One a sleek-bodied swimmer with a tail fin, the other a bulky, short-necked terror. What would you notice first? One clue is that neither was actually a dinosaur. They were marine reptiles ruling the Cretaceous seas. Let's dive in and see how these two prehistoric sea lizards stacked up. Two Giant Marine Reptiles Both Mosasaurus and Kronosaurus were huge marine predators, but they came from different reptile families. Kronosaurus was a member of the plesiosaur group, called Pliosaurus. These had very short necks and big heads, with four strong flippers propelling them through water. In fact, Kronosaurus crinslandicus, the best known species, grew roughly 30 to 34 feet long and could weigh around 7 to 12 tons. It had a stout, barrel-like body and a head crowned with big conical teeth. By contrast, Mosasaurus was a mosasaur, an aquatic lizard relative. It had a long, snake-like body and a paddle-shaped tail fin. The biggest Mosasaurus species, like M. Hoffmanii, reached up to about 39 to 50 feet long and weighed roughly 13 to 15 tons. So on average, Mosasaurus was longer and heavier than Kronosaurus, though estimates vary. Remember, neither of these were dinosaurs. Kronosaurus and Mosasaurus were marine reptiles, more like giant sea turtles or lizards than anything on land. For example, Mosasaurus belonged to an extinct group of squamate reptiles. Think underwater monitor lizard. Kronosaurus was a plesiosaur with a short neck. Jaws, teeth, and hunting style One of the most exciting differences is in their teeth and jaws. Kronosaurus had a big, heavy skull with strong, conical teeth, more like grappling hooks than blades. Its teeth were excellent for grabbing and crushing hard-shelled prey, like turtles. In fact, paleontologists found a Kronosaurus stomach fossil containing a giant sea turtle that it had swallowed whole and suffocated. Kronosaurus jaws were truly powerful tools. Bite force studies estimate it could pack one of the strongest bites of any animal, on par with or slightly above a T-Rex. Mosasaurus, by contrast, had many sharp slicing teeth. They were curved and blade-like, perfect for slashing flesh. Mosasaurus jaws were also very flexible. They had extra joints that could open its mouth wider than a crocodile's, kind of a double-hinged jaw, so it could swallow large prey. A typical Mosasaurus might grab a fish or turtle in its jaws and shake or slice it. Its bite force was powerful, but not quite as bone-crushing strong as Kronosaurus's. In fact, one source notes that Mosasaurus had sharper teeth, while Kronosaurus had the higher bite force. The shape of the head is telling too. Kronosaurus's skull was short and stubby, almost like a giant rock with teeth. Mosasaurus's skull was longer and more tapered, resembling a crocodile's snout with extra length. This gave Mosasaurus a bit more reach to snap at prey. Combined with the tail fin and muscular body, Mosasaurus could accelerate and lunge at prey in open water, whereas Kronosaurus may have relied on crushing power in perhaps somewhat shallower or more restricted waters. Habitat and Time Even their homes in the Cretaceous seas were different. Kronosaurus fossils have been found mainly in the Great Artesian Basin of Australia and a few in Colombia. Back then, this area was covered by the Aramanga Sea, a shallow inland sea that stretched across much of what is now Australia. The water there was relatively shallow and surprisingly quite cool, almost near freezing in parts. Kronosaurus was the apex predator of those murky waters. It swam among ammonite scallop reefs, cephalopods, fish, and even other plesiosaurs, preying on turtles and plesiosaur necks as we saw in fossils. Mosasaurus, in contrast, lived in wide open oceans and seaways around the world. Its fossils have been found on every continent except, so far, Australia. During the late Cretaceous, there were big seaways like the Western Interior Seaway in North America 
the Tethys Sea between continents, and vast Atlantic waters. Mosasaurus turned up in all of them. This means it experienced a variety of climates from tropical to cooler waters. It coexisted with other mosasaurs, sharks, turtles, and early seabirds. Unlike Chronosaurus, which hunted mainly the waters of one region, Mosasaurus was a truly global hunter. Time-wise, they were separated by millions of years. Chronosaurus prowled in the Aptian Albion stages, about 125 to 100 million years ago. Mosasaurs didn't show up until the Companion and Maastrichtian, about 82 to 66 million years ago. That's like living in different chapters of Earth's history book. When Chronosaurus was alive, dinosaurs like Iguanodon and Spinosaurids roamed the land nearby. By the time Mosasaurus swam around, dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops were walking on land. Diet and Lifestyle What did these big mega-predators eat? Both were carnivores, but their menus had some differences. Chronosaurus seems to have loved soft-bodied and shellfish prey. The fossils above tell a story. One Chronosaurus specimen had a whole big turtle in its stomach. Another fossil, an elasimosaurid plesiosaur, had Chronosaurus bite marks on its neck bones, suggesting Chronosaurus hunted long-necked plesiosaurs and bit through their necks. In short, turtles, ammonites, and other plesiosaurs were on the menu. Its powerful neck and jaws likely allowed it to grab moving prey from below. Chronosaurus might have been a bit like a crocodile of the sea, possibly sneaking up from beneath or ambushing fish and other reptiles. Interestingly, evidence even suggests that Chronosaurus adults might have attacked juveniles of its own kind, cannibalism, since a smaller Chronosaurus skull showed big bite wounds from another Chronosaurus. <laughs> Yikes! Family feuds. Mosasaurus had a wider menu. With its larger range and powerful slicing teeth, it could eat almost anything in the water. Fossils indicate it likely ate bony fish, sharks, squid, cephalopods, sea turtles, and even other mosasaurs. One fossil even shows it eating a plesiosaur calovectes. Mosasaurus likely hunted near the surface and in open water, lunging after prey like a giant water lizard. In some places where a mosasaurus arrived, like in North America's western interior seaway, the whole ecosystem seems to have shifted around it. That's how top predator it was. It even competed with other big mosasaurs like Tylosaurus and Prognathodon, but they likely ate different things so they could all survive together. As hunters, they each had strengths. Chronosaurus was likely a slow-burn ambush predator using brute force and surprise attack. Think big head slamming down on prey. Mosasaurus might have been more agile and intelligent, capable of chasing fast prey and ambushing near the surface. In fact, some scientists suggest Mosasaurus was quite smart for a reptile, able to outthink prey, whereas Chronosaurus relied on sheer size and power. What was the difference between Mosasaurus and Chronosaurus? When we think about Chronosaurus and Mosasaurus, it's tempting to lump them together as giant sea monsters. But in reality, they weren't just separated by time and distance. They represented two very different ocean worlds. For Chronosaurus, the world was smaller, warmer, and filled with shallow inland seas. Imagine a vast tropical lagoon stretching across Australia, filled with giant turtles, plesiosaurs, and shoals of fish. Chronosaurus was the apex enforcer of that environment ruling over a more confined, crowded ecosystem. Its shorter, bulkier build made sense here. It didn't need to chase prey across open oceans, but rather ambush it in tighter, reef-like spaces. Mosasaurus, by contrast, swam in oceans that looked much closer to our modern seas. Wide, deep, and teeming with everything from sharks to squid to seabirds, these were ecosystems with far greater variety and scale. To thrive here, Mosasaurus had to be flexible, faster, more maneuverable, and willing to eat almost anything. Where Chronosaurus was a specialist bruiser, Mosasaurus was a generalist overlord. There's also a fascinating contrast to their ecological impact. Chronosaurus likely shaped its world by targeting medium to large marine reptiles, keeping populations in check and 
influencing the survival of turtle and plesiosaur species. Mosasaurus, on the other hand, may have been so dominant that it essentially reset entire food chains. Evidence suggests smaller mosasaurs avoided areas where giants like Mosasaurus prowled, while birds and early marine mammals had to adapt strategies to avoid being wiped out. In a way, Mosasaurus wasn't just a predator, it was an ecosystem engineer. And then there's the mystery of survival. Why did Kronosaurus vanish tens of millions of years before Mosasaurus even appeared? The answer may lie in their differences. Kronosaurus's body plan, perfect for shallow seas, may have doomed it when environments shifted and inland seas dried up. Mosasaurus, with its versatile design, fit into the wide open oceans that expanded later in the Cretaceous. It was almost like Kronosaurus was built for a limited stage, while Mosasaurus arrived with the right tools at the right time to dominate the world stage. In the end, Mosasaurus was the bigger lengthwise predator with sharper teeth and more global range, while Kronosaurus was slightly shorter and bulkier with a brutally powerful bite tuned for crushing. Both were fearsome top predators of their time. It's a bit like comparing a crocodile to a great white shark in mythical form. Each had its own style of terror. So, next time you watch a Mosasaurus in a movie, hello Jurassic World fans, or flip through a dinosaur book, remember, Mosasaurus and Kronosaurus were cousins in sea monster duty, but they hunted in different eras and with a different swagger. One wore the crown in the late Cretaceous oceans, the other reigned in the early Cretaceous seas. And that's the ocean-sized difference between them.